To begin the assembly of your rudder, start by gathering the necessary components as shown in the table in the top left of the first page and place them in the general orientation of the exploded diagram. This will both help you get a better understanding of the part placement and orientation as well as make sure that you have all of the parts together at the same time. As you can see here, I've already got the parts unwrapped, deburred, dimpled where necessary, and clean. Something important to make note of is not to dimple the top row of holes on your front tip skin as the dimples will interfere of a nice tight placement and fit and then match drilling of your rudder tip later on. Taking a look at the first assembly page of the rudder, we'll see the rivet detail for the rib structure for the rudder. As always, it's important to make note of the rivet direction. In addition to that, on this page, we're gonna hold off on installing the, the counterweight as well as the bottom plate for the rudder cables as long as possible. The reason for both is similar. The counterweight as you're adjusting and moving and repositioning your part will cause the entire assembly to flex unnecessarily and we can easily access this at a later stage. Same thing with this, the bottom, the outside flanges here will not allow your rudder to rest flat on the table while you're working and can prevent the assembly from laying perfectly flat. So let's begin clecoing and then riveting the rib structure. This is the completed rivet detail for the ribs or skeleton of the rudder. As you can see, I left the, con the counterweight off the top as well as the rudder control bracket off the bottom for the reasons I mentioned earlier. I placed two clecos to hold this lower gusset into place so that after we've clecoed the skins and test fitted everything, this gusset remains in position for proper riveting of the control bracket. This is a good opportunity to check with a straight edge that this lower gusset does not flare out your lower rib, and we're good here, as well as you can check with a straight edge all of your other ribs to make sure everything is bent properly into position so that your rudder skin doesn't have any flares, dips, or bulges. So now we will clico the skin into place and check for alignment. So now that we've got the skins on the rudder clicoed into place, you'll notice a couple of things. First, I put an entire line of clecos down the front mating surface of this curved edge here. This makes sure that you can tell ahead of time if your skins are gonna rest really nice and tightly together um, so that you don't run into a problem when you're riveting and you find out that the skins are gonna rest like this. Um, as you can see here, these skins rest perfectly flat together and so there's no additional bending needed. Um, usually this is the case, a lot of the mating surfaces uh, do made up perfectly. Sling does a really good job of bending everything properly. In addition, you'll notice that I put the rudder control bracket on at this stage. This makes sure that I'm able to mount it and align all the holes, especially with this angled gusset channel here. Um, and if there was any kind of misalignment or trouble getting it to connect, uh, you know, the skins can easily be unclecoed and, and removed to get everything to line up better. Also, because the clecos stick out, it's resting up on all the clecos here, and so this is no longer a factor causing any kind of twist in the assembly. So at this stage, you'll wanna take a long straight edge and double check that your rudder skin is straight and there's no twisting in the assembly. And so as you can see, this is well aligned and everything is nice and straight. The next thing you're gonna do is, as you can see here, when I place the rudder tip into position, right off the bat you'll notice that the front edge is flared out too far. So what I'm gonna do here is remove the front top skin and bend it over a mandrel. I'm gonna use a PVC pipe in this case, but any small diameter tube will get the job done well. And you're just gonna slowly work it into position. As you can see, this 3 quarter inch PVC pipe fairly closely approximates this curve here. As you can see, the bend radius on the tip itself is slightly tighter than down here. 
what we don't want to do is over bend the top and have it not fit here. So this three quarter inch PVC pipe should do the trick just fine. So then we're going to just slowly work the bend, keeping it, keeping the center notches centered on the pipe and slowly work the bend out around the pipe. So now you can see the skin is fitting much better. If I can hold it, the skin is fitting much tighter around the tip of the wing skin. Now that our rudder tip is fitted in properly, something to make note of is that you don't want to remove so much material here that this easily slides out. It should be locked in in place to the point where you need to remove the side of the top skin here in order to get it in properly and seat it onto the joggle. You can see that there's a lip called the joggle where it needs to rest evenly on both the right and the left side of the rudder. Then you're going to push it forward as hard as possible into position and we're going to begin match drilling the holes working our way from the front to the back. After each match drill you'll place a Clico to hold it into position as you continue. After the first couple are done on either side, it becomes very easy to continue the process. Now that the rudder tip is match drilled and is fitting nice and tight along the skins, along the whole assembly, we have to remove the rudder tip and the front tip skin and dimple the top row of holes. It's the first seven holes along the top row on each side and countersink the rudder tip on the corresponding holes. While these components are removed, I'm gonna go ahead and rivet the rest of the assembly to hold it all into place before we reinstall them. Once you have both sides of the skins completely riveted down, it's time to rivet the front set of rivets for the overlapping skins. Keep in mind that the second rivet hold down after the rivets are in place will be enlarged to accept the tail strobe wire uh, grommet. Uh, then we will run the tail strobe wire through. And then after all of that, we will install the counterweight here. Once you've got your front overlapping skins all riveted into position, the next step is going to be to upsize the second hole down to 3 8 in the US or 9.5 millimeters. Um, you can either use a step drill or you can use multiple size drill bits, just slowly working the hole size up and ultimately to 3 8 like I said. Then you put your grommets in and run the wire through with soapy water, leaving enough length on each end so that you're able to put your, your connector here as well as wire your tail strobe. The next step before permanently riveting your uh, rudder tip on is you're going to want to use this flat spot here and mount your tail strobe exactly in the center of it. Um, it's a good idea to have your tail strobe ahead of time, whichever one you're going to use. That way you can make sure that your mounting positions are exactly as they should be. And it's just going to be a lot easier to run your wire through the hole and get all your wiring done with everything kind of disassembled before you permanently mount it in place. Now that we have our tail strobe installed, it's really just a matter of taking a straight edge from tip to tip and marking a short straight line down the center of your um, flat area here and then verifying that the line is in fact in the center of the flat area. Uh, you can then take your tail strobe and move it forward and back along that center line uh, just to make sure you find the widest point of the curve of your flat area and the place that this light's going to nest the best and look the best when final assembly is complete. Um, then you run your wire through, and I've used solder sleeve here. Uh, you can use a connector if you can source one that's small enough to, for you to b drill a large enough hole here. Um, of course, you're going to need a small enough connector and a large enough hole, otherwise your connector is just going to be trapped inside anyway. Uh, something else to make note of is where you countersink your holes for the composite here, uh, it leaves a very, very thin um, bit of material remaining at the center of your countersink. Um, you have a couple of options. One would be to overlay fiberglass on the inside of both sides. A couple of layers should do just to give it enough reinforcing material so that rivet has something to bite onto. Uh, my preferred method is to Clico uh, these aluminum backing washers into place and then just a dab of super glue or hot glue just to hold them in place long enough for you to get rivets and um, shoot them through. Uh, these give a lot more surface area 
for that clamping force from the rivet to press against here rather than just that flimsy uh, reduced volume composite that's there. Uh, make note of using stainless or any kind of steel washer because you'll end up with some galvanic corrosion between the aluminum rivets and the washer. So if you are going to use steel washers, remember to use a corrosion inhibitor uh, through that process. So our next step is going to be to Clico and then rivet this assembly together and our rudder will be complete. Now that we've got the rudder completely finished riveting, uh, the last step is to check it for alignment on your vertical stabilizer. It's definitely a better idea to check this now rather than getting through paint or into final assembly and finding out you've got an alignment problem. Um, one option you do have is to leave the front um, overlapping skins unriveted until this step just to make sure that the alignment's going to be good and there's no twist. The front overlapping skins are what really lock in the rudder's twist. Uh, I find that as long as you're building on a nice flat surface and you make careful note with this uh, control bracket to be hanging off the edge of the table, and as well as waiting until the very end to install that counterweight, uh, you should be able to produce a perfectly straight rudder. Um, but anyway, so now that I've got all three of the bolts in, uh, making sure that the front tip of the rudder is perfectly aligned with the leading edge of the vertical stabilizer. Um, you choose three, me three measuring points and you can mark them out or use rivets, a rivet line or whatever's easiest. And um, you're going to measure from the trailing edge of your rudder down to the table in the three locations. And then you're going to flip the entire assembly over and still making sure that your, your rudder tip is perfectly aligned with the leading edge of the, the vertical stabilizer. You're going to take the same three measurements at the same three points. And as long as they're you know, within a millimeter at the most of each other, you know your assembly is perfectly aligned and perfectly straight. So if this is the case, then your rudder is now complete.